be singing together tonight and worshiping and so glad that you're here. And before you take a seat, why don't you take a chance to welcome somebody and wish each other Merry Christmas. Hey, welcome everybody. Thanks for being with us on this Christmas Eve. Special welcome to you joining us on live stream. Uh, maybe it's your tradition to do this or you're at home, uh, shut in, whatever it might case would be. Glad you're with us as well. And friends, uh, we're celebrating the fact that our Christ, our Savior, is born. And we get to do that together as family. So thanks for uh, doing that this Christmas. Uh, hey, a couple things I want you to be aware of. One is if you didn't get your glow stick when you came in, you're going to need that later. So it's, it's, it's okay if you get back out in the lobby and grab one of those because uh, we'll definitely want those a little bit later. Also want to remind those of us who call Sam Alliance our church home, we are uh, taking a Christmas offering. Uh, we're not passing place, but we have offering boxes you can give online. And we're giving to our Clear Campaign Ministry Fund as well as uh, we would love to give a gift to those who are helping combat homelessness. So um, that's where our Christmas offering is uh, going to. So I want you to be aware of that. And also let you know that um, the day after Christmas, so Sunday, we are having services. We have two services, 9.30 and 11. But some of you may have been paying attention to the news and to the weather. And there's maybe a weather event coming. So uh, just uh, pay attention to our website. We'll let you know if we're holding services. We do have a backup plan in case weather keeps us from being able to gather together as the church uh, this coming Sunday. So I just want to be uh, up to speed on all that information. Hey, tonight we are entering into this incredible story, the story of a God who would send his son, and a son who would come as a baby, a vulnerable baby. And for many of us in the room, this is a story we're quite familiar with. Perhaps you're here and you've never really heard the fullness of this story, but we're going to engage in it in singing as well as uh, just hearing the story read to us from Scripture. You're going to see some video on the screen that tells the story and you'll be cued as to when you sing, but we're together as family, just going to join together and uh, just enjoy the, just the, the beauty of the season. And so let's continue to do that. Let's worship together as we remember our Christ who was sent, born in a manger. Let's worship him. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month, for the word of God will never fail. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Now Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit, just as the angel had said. 
Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quickly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them.
Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. Stand as we continue to sing. God, that's why we're here. It is so good to look at you, Jesus, again. Remember, 
your story and our story. And as we look at you tonight, Jesus, we see the Prince of Peace. That is who you are. You are peace. We need your peace. As we look at you, you are the joy that is our strength. We need your joy to fill us. Jesus, we look at you. Your word says that you are love. That is who you are. We look at you. We need you. We love you. It is amazing to sing praises to you tonight. May you be honored and glorified in this place.
nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus amen yeah uh you can you can have a seat That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, he has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds considered what to do next. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said. But this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. People who walk in darkness will see a great light. 
For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you, as people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery, and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, His government and its peace will never end.
Thanks for expressing uh, that joy in singing and engaging in the story. That's uh, such a marvelous story of God sending his son. Hey, some years ago, um, the team I get to lead, our pastoral management team, which is our, our senior level pastors around this place, uh, went on a retreat. And, uh, and it just so happened that that retreat took place over a uh, time of the calendar that my birthday fell in. And um, uh, to my surprise, as we were engaged in a work retreat and just enjoying being together, and um, my birthday came and my team gave me a gift, actually a pretty astonishing gift. Um, if you don't know or not that you've been around this place, you probably know that I'm colorblind. I don't see all the colors that you see, perhaps. Um, I'm that guy who, when I goes to, when I go to the Portland airport, I drive all around the parkade looking for a parking spot. Somebody thought it was a good idea to have red and green lights to tell you which uh, which uh, parking spaces were open or closed. Uh, I don't see red, green, brown, blues, and purples, all that good stuff. Um, but you may have heard that there's this, uh, this new set of corrective glasses that you can wear for people who, not, not doesn't help everyone who's colorblind, but um, these sunglasses you wear that actually correct colorblindness and you can see colors. Well, my team uh, bought me that gift for my birthday. And um, they gave it to me, and uh, I went outside, and it was a beautiful scenery, this place we were at, and I put those glasses on for the first time. And uh, it, it takes a while for the glasses sort of kick, to kick in, um, but it, they started to kick in a little bit, and I found myself just stunned by what I was seeing. I didn't know there were so many different shades of green. Uh, there's so many different shades of green. I, I didn't really know what green was. I was seeing it for the first time, and uh, I started to see different hues. And, and that in, in the forest that we were in, actually, I started seeing some depth in the forest that I'd never seen before. And I, it was just amazing for me, just taking all these sights in. In fact, we were driving, and I remember saying you know, to them, is, is that red? Is that what red is? I, di I didn't know what to call these different colors. It was just... It was so, it was just so, uh, yeah, just surprising to me. Well, fast forward, uh, I, it's Christmas time, and um, my family is gathered. I'm there with my mom and my dad and my siblings, and uh, got some nephews and nieces in the room. And um, there, there are more than one of us in our family that are colorblind. And uh, my nephew's colorblind, and I, I talked to him about these glasses, and asked him um, if he'd ever put those glasses on. And he said, no, he'd never done that. And so I said, well, would you like to? Sure. So I ran out to the car. It was dark outside, so I brought the glasses in. And uh, the, the house was all lit up. My mom just goes all out for, uh, for Christmas. And so the tree was decorated, and my, my nephew uh, puts these glasses on. And I said, oh, it's going to take a little bit of a while. It's going to take a little time. But just, just look at the, the, the colored lights on the tree. And so he's looking, and uh, he, he's not a man of a lot of words. And so he's looking. He doesn't say anything. A little time goes by. And, and then it hits him. And tears start running down his face. Tears are running down his cheek. And he, all he can say is, it's just so beautiful. He was seeing something for the very first time. You, you probably had a moment, not, not like colorblind people seeing color for the first time, but you probably had a moment where you see something for the very first time and it just stuns you. Friends, God sent his son Jesus into our world to help us see something for the very first time, and that is our need for him. In fact, the prophet Isaiah in chapter 9, speak this very clearly. Isaiah says, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. That news will hit the kids in the room here in a few moments. <laughs> Way to go, parents. You're hanging in there. John chapter 1. One of Jesus' best friends says these words. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light that's, so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. 
the one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. They couldn't see. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, to them did he give the right to be called children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. This is God's holy word. Friends, we have to see this. You see, God sent his son, and his son is the light of the world, and he made it possible for us to see. And if you're in the room this evening, or if you're watching online, recall the moment when you first saw Jesus for who he is and believed the gift that he has to offer you. It's just so beautiful, if I could speak the words of my nephew when he saw color for the first time. It's just so beautiful of what Jesus has done for us. And it's just so beautiful how God implemented this plan, sending his son as a vulnerable baby. We've been lighting Advent candles in this Advent season. We've uh, lit the candle of peace and hope and love and joy. And tonight, we're lighting the Christ candle, remembering that Jesus came as the light of the world. And he came to a people living in deep darkness. That was the case in Isaiah's day. And friends, some things just don't change. There's still darkness. But on this night, in this time of year, we engage in this rhythm, this spiritual routine of reminding ourselves that the light has come. And light dispels the darkness. And who would have thought that Christmas 2021 would have looked like this? But here we are, still celebrating the fact that God has sent his son and our lives have been touched. And maybe you're here tonight and you didn't come here on your own accord. You came here because that's what your family was doing. That's what your friends were doing. And can I just say, maybe this is a season in which the concept of light and hope and joy and peace and love has a special attraction to you in light of all of our world's circumstances. God is a gift that he'd love to give to you. And it comes in the form of a baby born in a manger. God taking on flesh so we might be saved. She you pray with me? So Lord, uh, tonight on this Christmas Eve, many of us in the room, some watching from various parts of our country, of our city, as well as the world. Tonight we remember and we worship you as the light of the world. Thank you, Jesus, for leaving the endless glory of heaven and entering our broken world, being placed in a feeding trough stained with the saliva of cattle and donkeys. Such humility. But you did it so that the light might enter our hearts. This Christmas, Lord, I pray that our response to you would be that of gratitude. There's not a one of us in this room who figured this out on our own. You've made it possible for us to see. Thank you for giving us eyes to see. Increase our hearing as well. We celebrate and we worship you on this Christmas Eve. We pray this now in the name of Emmanuel, our God who is with us. Amen. Hey, this is the time of the service where you are going to want to have your glow stick. Uh, and I know we got kids in the room, so kids, this is really important. This is the time of the service where you're going to have to help adults know how to operate one of these things. So you might want to teach your grandma and grandpa or your mom and dad or your aunt and uncle to grab it. You kind of break it. Uh, if, if you're at home, um, maybe light a candle. And turn the lights off because we're going to sing a song we do every year, Silent Night. And we're going to symbolize together as family 
um, the light that's come into the world to dispel the darkness. And I love that we get to do that together as family. And by the way, isn't it awesome to have our, our, our deaf community with us? Deaf Ecclesia is with us tonight. So glad you guys are joined us for this Christmas Eve. Pastor Bo and Whitney, thanks for leading. And, uh, and, and, and we're going to sing. So I want you to stand. We're all going to stand together. And Laura and Natalie are going to, are going to lead us. Now here's what you need to know. You need to raise your, your glow stick high. The lights will slowly dim over the verses. It is completely legal to turn around and look at the light. Uh, you can take pictures. You can shoot video. But let's remember, this is just a symbol of what Jesus has done for us. He is so good. Let's worship him. seat in the house, by the way. Beautiful to watch. And you can grab a seat. And we're going to get ready for just one more long-standing tradition here at Salem Alliance on Christmas Eve. It's the Hallelujah Chorus. I'll give a couple of instruction and then madness ensues. Okay, so first of all, um, if you know the Hallelujah Chorus even a little bit, you are welcome to join us. We have music that we will hand to you. We have a director that will direct us. Secondly, if you're going to come up and be a part of the choir, uh, we recommend that you wear your masks as we will be in, packed in tightly. And uh, it's not as fun with the mask, but let's say safe tonight. Third thing you need to know, we are going to have sopranos here, basses, tenors, and altos. So I invite you to come. Let's get set up for the Hallelujah Chorus.
Hey, way to go, choir. Well done, well done. Hey, everybody, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You watch online. Have a great Christmas day. Grace and peace to you. Enjoy the rest of this evening. Thanks again for being with us today. If you've missed a previous service and want to get caught up, feel free to access all our weekend services at livestream.com slash Salem Alliance. One more thing, we would like to pray for you. We believe that God hears us and cares about our needs. You can begin that process by going to salemalliance.org and clicking prayer support. Have a great week.